Now let's talk about some rules for placing electrons in actual orbitals, because what we've been doing so far is placing electrons in sublevels. First one is the lowest energy orbitals are always filled first, and we'll talk about what this means. No orbital can have more than two electrons. When orbitals of identical energy are available, electrons fill each orbital with one electron before any orbital has two electrons. And finally, so when placing two electrons, when placing electrons in orbitals, one of them is placed spin up uh, as an up arrow. One of them is placed spin up. And it's usually drawn as, and I'll draw it big, so it's usually a one-headed arrow. So this would be spin up, and the other spin down. And spin down typically looks like a one-headed arrow pointing down. I don't care, you can draw them with two heads. I'm not gonna dock points. But the key thing is that in any one orbital, there are spin up and spin down. And this has to do with that fourth quantum number that uh, we didn't really talk about, or one of the other quantum numbers. I, I don't think we talked about the third or fourth one. But that's what we need to know as a result from quantum mechanics. Let me show you what I mean by that. So now we're gonna do what's called an orbital energy diagram for the chlorine atom. And an orbital energy diagram shows all orbitals, uh, or let's say this, and each orbital is a line or box. And it just depends, sorry, line or box. And it just depends what I can draw on uh, the learning management system, which one I use. But typically, I use boxes when I draw them by hand. So there's a big arrow here, and arrow in the E stands for energy. And the higher you go, there's higher energy. So this is just going to be higher energy. And that means lower energy is going to be all the way at the bottom. And um, before I do an orbital energy diagram, what I usually do is I usually do the electron configuration first. And we've done this already, so I'll go fairly quickly here. 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. So that's the same result we got before. And here's what the orbital energy diagram does. So um, I'm going to have each orbital is a box. And I'm going to start with the lowest energy one, and that's 1s. And here's a good time to talk about why the 1s orbital is filled first for every single atom there is. It's because it's the lowest energy orbital. It's the lowest energy sublevel. And that has to do with the fact that it's on average closest to the nucleus. No. All right. And then, oh, because there's two electrons in the 1s, we put spin up and spin down into that orbital. Then we get to 2s. 2s is one orbital. That one orbital gets a box. There are two electrons in it. Spin up, spin down, arrows. Next we go to 2p. And we've said this before, but now we really get into what it means. 2p has three orbitals. And all three of these orbitals are at the same energy. And they're also called, and you might see this in a future class, you don't have to remember this for this class, they might be called energy degenerate, which is another way of saying same energy. And there are six electrons but the way we put electrons into the 2p one at a time is spin up, spin up, spin up. 
and it comes back to this rule last time. Fill each orbital with one electron before any orbital has two electrons. Four orbitals of identical energy. Same energy, fill them one at a time, and then because there's six, we do end up filling the whole thing. But that'll come into play later on. Well, we'll see. So 3s, and then uh, that has two electrons, and then 3p. Again, we have three same energy or identical energy p orbitals. We put in three, and we put in a total of five. And so this is the next layer of information. It says that the 3p electrons are the highest energy electrons in there. Electrons filled from lowest to highest energy. Technically, the fluorine atom does have a 4s, a 3d, etc., etc., but they're vacant. So they're up here somewhere, but we don't need them. They're empty. They exist. They're just empty. And this is the orbital energy diagram for a chlorine atom. Let's do one that's uh, the same idea for an oxygen atom. Oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, element number 8. It's going to be a little smaller, so we can draw it a little smaller. It will always have an energy pointing up arrow. It will always start with 1s at the bottom. And 1s has two electrons, therefore it has one up and one down, that's two arrows. Then 2s has two electrons, then 2p. 3 of these, and we put the electrons in one at a time, 1, 2, 3. We don't pair them unless we absolutely have to. There's that fourth electron. This is the correct electron configuration, or sorry, correct orbital energy diagram for the oxygen atom. And now might be a good time to talk about how in 2p, there are 2px, 2py, and 2pz. There are three orbitals, which leads to there being three boxes. But as a side note, we can't tell which of these boxes is which of these orbitals. We never will label them, per se, because um, like the axes are arbitrary. We put the axes on, so there's, there's no way to tell them apart. There's no differences there. Um, and at some point, there will be differences that we'll see, but there are certainly no differences now. And even when we see differences, it'll be because we decide which axis is which. And that is your second orbital energy diagram.